Hi, my name is Nicholas Jenkins. I'm an associate professor in the English department here at Stanford. And during the time that I've been sheltering in place like everybody else, I've been putting out on my balcony here a little bowl of water for the birds to come and drink uh, from. And uh, I see stri strange, surprising birds in these new conditions that we live in that I haven't seen before. And it really reminds me of the experience of also encountering new things that float into my life when uh, I'm living at home like everybody else. Poems are like that. Poems come and land on your balcony. A friend sends you something. Uh, you hadn't expected to see it, but there it is suddenly in front of you. And uh, it's a magical experience to suddenly have this thing in your life that wasn't there a few moments ago. It may not last that long. Uh, it may not provide a different shape to the rest of the day, but it, while you're in the experience, it's beautiful. And a poem that I've found uh, recreating that sense for me is James Merrill's poem, Childlessness, which a friend introduced me to recently. I'm very grateful to her for doing that. And it's been on my mind, so I thought I would just uh, talk about it and read it first to you. So here is James Merrill's poem, Childlessness. The weather of this winter night, my dream wife, ranting and raining, wakes me. Her cloak blown back to show the lining's dull lead foil sweeps along asphalt. Houses look blindly on. One glimmers through a blind. Outside, I hear her tricklings arraign my little plot. Had it or not agreed to transplantation for the common good of certain rare growths yielding guaranteed gold pollen, gender of sons, large, hardy, enviable blooms. But in my garden, nothing is planted. Neither is that glimmering window mine. I lie and think about the rain, how it had been drawn up from the impure ocean, from gardens lightly, deliberately tainted, how it falls back time after time through poisons visible at sunset when the enchantress masked as friend unfurls entire bolts of voluminous pistachio, saffron and rose. These, as I fall back to sleep and other slow colors clothe me, glide to rest then burst along my limbs like buds, like bombs from the navigator's vantage, waking me, lulling me. Later, I am shown the erased metropolis, reassembled on sampans, freighted each with toddlers, holy dolls, dead ancestors. One tiny monkey puzzles over fruit. The vision rises and falls. The garland gently takes root in the sea's coma. Hours go by before I can stand to own a sky stained red, a world clad only in rags, threadbare, dabbling the highway's ice with blood. A world. The cloak thrown down for it to wear in token of past servitude, has fallen onto the shoulders of my parents, whom it is eating to the bone. Now that's Merrill's poem. The first thing I like about it is I don't really understand it, and that's always been an attractive feature of poetry for me. To be able to get lost in a piece of language is one thing that I've always valued about poetry. And childlessness is a, a great example of Merrill's power. It's not one of his most famous poems. It's probably not a poem that a lot of scholars have written about. But on the other hand, while you're actually inside the poem, while you're actually experiencing, it's really magical. Part of that comes from the fact that there are cryptic and ambiguous currents flowing through the poem. 
but also the beauty of the organization is mesmerizing to me. So this is like a poem cut into four shots if it was a movie. And I think it's often helpful to think about poems as being organized like movie scripts. If this was a movie, there'd be four shots. There'd be one shot that was, I hear the rain. There'd be another shot that was, I lie and think about the rain. There'd be a third shot, I fall asleep and dream. And then the fourth shot would be, I wake up and try and face the day. It's very simply and classically organized. But within that, it has a kind of fecundity of language, strange turns of phrase, a kind of eerie combination of the inner and outer worlds, like in the first lines, the weather of this winter night, my dream wife, ranting and raining. So I find myself thinking about this poem a lot, just in terms of its own literary prowess, but it's also important to think about the theme of the poem, childlessness. That's a bold title, probably uh, a surprising title, since it doesn't really allude directly to Merrill's own family situation. So Merrill was a gay man. He was involved in a long-term relationship uh, with David Jackson. Uh, but their marriage, I think it's fair to call it that, was an open one. Uh, and Merrill didn't have any children. So thinking about the experience of lacking something, especially for somebody so privileged in so many other ways, gives a kind of urgency and poignancy to the poem that I think is uh, really spectacular. 